University. Salima Hashmi from Beacon House National University in conversation with Temu Rahman from LUMS. <laughs> you want your own copy? In that is my Pakistan left review ki copy there. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum everyone. Uh, welcome to this session which is uh, going to be a review of this uh, 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 this book, this edited volume that has just been published by Oxford University Press called Pakistan Left Review Then and Now. This is the interesting thing that I was getting my wife today when I was getting my wife today. So I told her that I'm doing a session on the Pakistan Left Review. She stood up and said, Pakistan Left Review? I said, yes, do you know about it? She said, yes, we were also studying. I said, how did you study? It was in London. No, we were also studying. We were also studying. So you can see that the, that the journal had an influence on uh, uh, the Pakistani left, despite the fact that it was published in uh, uh, London. Um, so without, uh, uh, you know, taking too much of the time on the microphone, uh, let me um, come to the, 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 the book itself. This is an edited volume by Nadir Chima and Stephen M. Lyon, and uh, Salima Hashmi is also a contributor in this, um, uh, uh, in this, well, in the original Pakistan Left Review, as well as in this particular edition, um, in the way of the artwork that she has done uh, for the cover, etc. So let me start with you, Stephen. Thank you so much for joining us. And um, could you walk us through the process of writing this book? You must have come across the archives of the Pakistan Left Review at some point. Or Stephen, who is in Urdu, but the answer that you will give in English, because if you give the answer in Urdu, it will be a little bit more time. So he said, I will give the answer in English. So how did you come across the Pakistan Left Review, and how did you put it all together? What was the process of writing this book? Well, I have to give credit to Nadir Chima for that. So Nadir Chima, uh, is he's very active in leftist circles in London. I think without necessarily being a leftist himself, this is the social circle he travels in. And it's really thanks to his relationship with Mr. Aziz Kurta that he was given permission to reproduce all of the issues of Pakistan Left Review from 1968 to 1970. Now, Nader had been working on this for some years, as, as you know, and it sort of faltered, it sort of stalled, because um, I think with all due respect to everyone that he worked with, they're very good intellectual thinkers, but they are not that kind of workhorse mm -hmm. that just knuckles down and does something. And so Nader was, was kind of crying to me, saying, oh, it's not going anywhere, it's not going anywhere. And I said, well, you know, I'm not a leftist, I'm not that intellectually strong, but I'm a good workhorse. Mm -hmm. I can make things happen, I can mm -hmm. push it through. And I read the journal, I read it all, and I was almost in tears at just how we didn't get where these young people were promising. Mm. The promise of the late 60s mm. simply hasn't materialized. Mm. And I, after many discussions with Nader, I thought, you know, young people need to know that the promise is still there, mm. right? So what is that? Um, your father says the with the Jordan iska vada head, right? So that vada is still there. Right. We, we must renew our commitment to making the world a better place. And what better way than to remind young people mm. who still have an investment in the future, to remind them that they're not starting from scratch. There is a world of intellectual thought, of commitment to social justice, to a better tomorrow that we can build on, that we can build from. We may abandon some specific ideology, ideologies, sure. but we maintain that commitment to the principle mm. of social justice. And what I, what I read loud and clear, even from the kind of really ardent leftist Marxist, mm. was that they care about people, they care about the most vulnerable. Mm. And of course, whether you're on the left or the right, I believe this should be our commitment, mm. that we should care about one another, mm. right? They're all our brothers and sisters, and we must, we must be working to make a better place for it. And of course, then, when, um, of course, the eminent Salima Hashmi uh, started WhatsApping me saying, are we going to do this? Mm. How is this going to happen? Mm. And it was thanks to Nader and Salima, really, that mm. this happened at all, because they were pushing me. And the one thing I'm good at as a dean mm. is making some things happen. Right? So this has been my job from the beginning, not necessarily providing the best 
uh, intellectual contribution, mm -hmm. but making sure that the best intellectual contribution around us can see the light of day. Because if it doesn't see the light of day, it doesn't have the impact. Mm. And I think you know so much of what the left has written in the in, in Pakistan's own context has, you know, we fail to archive it or to really uh, you know uh, have it in a form where it's transferable to the next generation. So I think we owe great debt to you for for having done that. And regardless of whether one agrees with uh, any specific article, uh, it's it's a it's a test to the history of struggle and what happened. Now, uh, this whole thing came together. Or to see if you could ask, Carlo, no, no, fairs to Anusuna, that to see if you could fairs, Pariakro, Trigan, could ask Carlo, is cheese the Baralji, Salimaji, Akipas, I think you were also part of the so called London group. This was not a formal name, I'm sure. It was uh, sounds like uh, because there are other London groups that have formed many London groups that have formed and so on. So tell us a little bit about uh, uh, this London group, how it came together, and what were its, uh, you know, what, what were you all thinking at the time? Uh, uh, I think as um, uh, Steve has mentioned, that this was a time, the 60s was a time, um, in which many things were happening in Pakistan. For various reasons, um, our family had moved abroad. 62 me, my whole family, my relatives, and we all people who had come to the time of the time had some more attention to them. So they had to move for a little while to eat the air of Pradesh. This is Ayub Khan's period. This is Ayub Khan's period. So he, he was going to get the Lenin Peace Prize and I was going to study in, in, in England. So he and I left and um, we went first to Moscow and that's another saga. Uh, and then my, my mother and my sister followed. So that was the early 60s. And then I was married and I was married and I was married and I went back to London. So the 60s was a time of great change worldwide. The Vietnam War was on, the campaign for nuclear disarmament was happening, the struggle in South Africa against apartheid and so on and so forth. Um, Pakistan may eventually the decade of progress with her Ayub Khanka wo ikhtatam par pahunch raha tha aur ek yahan pe bhi ek social movement thi to ye hum jo London mein jab pad rahe the ya kaam kar rahe the andaza tha ke Pakistan mein jo ke tabdili ki ek khahish hai um uske piche bhi bahut sari quwatein thi and there were there were labor movements there were all kinds of things happening the students in london the groups in london wanted to contribute aur socha ke bhi mein bahut sare sawal jo uth rahe hain how to put them down and it so happened that a few people got together among them was um, ikbal khan who was the person who really thought about that we have to take one year out of which people can talk to each other and talk to each other. There was no money in the jail, so we had to ask each other one pound of the contribution. And the first one was like this, I had made a cover of it. And I asked an electric typewriter to someone. And we brought it out on that. It was a very modest thing. The whole part of, the whole portion of it came about because A, we were students or I was, at that time I had started teaching in a school. We were people who were deeply concerned about Pakistan. And we felt that while we are here, we have to do something. We have to clear our thinking. We have to get like-minded people together. The journal was a result of that. We took part in demonstrations in London whether it was the anti-Vietnam war, whether it was a campaign for nuclear disarmament, with war ko ja ke to South Africa house ke saamne hum protest mein baithte the, vagara vagara. Aur wo jo ek vakt tha, usme bhot saari cheezen jo hain, wo ho rahi thi. Humne mehsus kiya ke humare jo mashraki Pakistan ke jo humare hum vatan the wo. उनकी जो बेचैनी और उनकी जो नाराजगी थी, वो एक 
एक पॉइंट पे पहुंच रही थी so, और ये डिस्कशंस चलती थी गैंजीज रेस्टोरेंट था एक जिसमें जिसके ओनर तसदुक साहब मेरे वालिद के दोस्त थे वो मश, उनका मशरकी पाकिस्तान से ताल्लुक था वो हमें दोपहर को खाने के बाद हमें वो जगह दे देते थे तो हमारी डिस्कशंस चलती थी ये जर्नल उसके नतीजे में निकला था वन आई थिंक नाओ ऑफ यंग पीपल who for different reasons they don't know the history of thinking and concern mere khayal mein hum kai bahut se lihaz se we are standing today where we were in 1968 i really aur to jab aziz kurta jo ke bimar the us waqt unne kaha ke bhi main ye हमने जो रिसाला निकाला था मेरे ख्याल में हमें बहुत सारी ऐसी चीज़ें हैं जिनसे हम आज भी पढ़ के और कुछ हासिल कर सकते हैं तो फिर हमने कहा कि भाई वो कहाँ हैं रिसाले वी यूज़ टू हैव दम वी डेंट हैव दम देन नादर चीमा फाउंड द होल रिकॉर्ड इन द लाइब्रेरी इन लंदन स्कूल ऑफ इकनॉमिक्स वी गॉट पर मैम वी आस्ट बाई दैट टाइम इकबाल साहब हैड पास वे इन लाहौर वी आस्ट अजीज के भाई छाप दें हमने कहा ये छापे सो दैट्स हाउ द स्टोरी स्टार्ट अगर आप इसको पढ़ें तो यू विल सी दे वर सो मैनी थिंग्स दैट वर हैपनिंग दैन विच आर हैपनिंग नाउ एंड मुझे सबसे ज़्यादा जो चीज़ें याद हैं वो अपने उन दोस्तों का दुख याद है जिनका ताल्लुक चिटगोंग से था ढाका से था और जो हमसे वो शिकायत करते थे और जो हमसे गिला करते थे और जिसके हमारे पास हल नहीं थे और मैं जब उनको कहती थी कि भाई हमारा ये एक मुश्तरक स्ट्रगल है मुश्तरक जद्दोजहद है तो वो कहते थे कि भाई नहीं लेकिन क्योंकि जो जो लोग आप पे हुकूमत कर रहे हैं हम अब उन पे हम हम तो बर्दाश्त नहीं कर सकते गालिबा हम जो मगरबी पाकिस्तान में थी हमारी क़त बर्दाश्त ज़्यादा थी और उनकी कम थी बट वट एवर द रीज़न दिस इज़ अ मैगजीन आई वॉज नॉट अ थेरटिशन और अ स्टूडेंट ऑफ पॉलिटिक्स आई केम फ्राम अ पोलिटिकल फैमिली आई रोट माई फर्स्ट आर्टिकल ऑन आर्ट इन पाकिस्तान लेफ्ट व्यू एट दैट टाइम जिसमें मैंने जायजा लिया कि पाकिस्तानी आर्ट क्या चीज़ है और क्या and i had never written on art i was an art student and i was an artist magar kabhi likha nahi tha to um ab jab ye tay hua ke bhi dobara se hum ye sab ikatthe jo saale ikatthe karke unko chhapenge to oxford university press ne kaha bhi aajkal ka kya iska taluq aaj se kya hai so that's when we went back to the idea that okay so steve and nader and rahman subhan jo hamare us zamane mein saathi the mashriqi pakistan se jo bangladesh mein hain unse bhi kaha jaye aur maine khud bhi ye kaavish ki ki dobara se aaj ke din pakistani art ka jaisa lo hmm aur ye apna pehla mazmoon dekhu ke bhi usme jo maine kuch passion goyan ki thi ya kuch apne saathiyon mabai jaise fankaron se gila kiya tha क्या आज वो सही लगता है कि नहीं और मुझे एहसास हुआ कि जो मैंने चीज़ें उस वक्त लिखी थी वो सही नहीं थी क्योंकि जो लोग ये जो इतने साल जो गुजर गए हैं पाकिस्तानी आर्टिस्ट ने वाजे किया कि वो उस इम्तहान पे पूरे उतरते हैं जो कि मेरा ख्याल था उस वक्त पूरे नहीं उतरते थे सो इट वॉज अ वे ऑफ रेली कमिंग इन टू द प्रजेंट looking at the past and trying to make young people realize that in 1958 what happened when the first military dictator took over and the state of pakistan started to rot because the hope for democracy was gone that is where the problem lies ये मैं इसलिए कहती हूँ क्योंकि जाहिर है आज के नौजवान कहते हैं ना वेन दे से टूडे यू नो जयाल हक ने ये किया और जयाल हक ने वो किया आई वॉज अ यंग स्टूडेंट इन लाहौर जब हमने डेमोन्स्ट्रेशन निकाली जब पथरीस लुम्बा वॉज किल्ड बाई द सी आई वी वॉज सो इन्वॉल्व इन द वर्ल्ड 
आई वॉज इन दैट डेमोन्स्ट्रेशन मतलब मैं मेरे ख्याल मेट्रिक में थी या फर्स्ट ईयर में थी इन लाहौर बिग डेमोन्स्ट्रेशन अगेंस्ट द किलिंग ऑफ लमुम्बा ओके सो दैट वॉज वॉट वी वर इन देर वॉज अ डेमोन्स्ट्रेशन ऑफ फिफ्टी थाउजेंड रेलवे वर्कर्स जब आटे की कीमत बढ़ गई थी देर वॉज जस्ट बिफोर अयूब खान टोकोवा माई मदर वॉज इन दैट डेमोन्स्ट्रेशन क्योंकि जो खातन जमहूरियत पसंद खातन का भी डेमोन्स्ट्रेशन साथ था एंड वेन अयूब खान टोकोवा माई मदर सेट यू सी दिस इज वॉट हैपन्स वेन द पीपल कम आउट इन द स्ट्रीट द आर्मी हैज़ टू टेक ओवर एंड we woke up in the morning and she said you know the tanks are on the road i see okay so people forget they forget that it was in during ayub khan's time that hasan nasser was tortured in the lahore fort and killed mm. it began what happened mm. in during saul haq's time mm. ye ek silsile ki kadi hai and i think that when you look at this you can understand दिस इज पार्ट ऑफ आर हिस्ट्री और मेरे ख्याल में कि जब आप तारीख की बात करते हैं तो ये याद रखना कि बहुत सारे नौजवान लोग उस जमाने में दिलो जान से पाकिस्तान की फिक्र में मतलब फिक्र कर रहे थे चाहे वो पाकिस्तान में थे या पाकिस्तान से बाहर थे और ये एक छोटी सी काविश थी कि भी लेट्स गेट सम पीपल टूगेदर लेट्स ट्राई एंड ब्रिंग आउट सम थिंग अपने जो सोच है उसका इजहार करें तीन या चार शुमारे निकले थे बस सही, सही। उसके बाद पैसे भी खत्म हो गए और कुछ लोग वापस आ गए कुछ लोग ने की हिम्मत रही बट आई थिंक इट वॉज इम्पोर्टेंट टू डू वंडरफुल थैंक यू फॉर रिकाउंटिंग दैट इंटायर हिस्ट्री देर आर सम इंटरेस्टिंग थीम्स दैर आई सी इन दिस इन द पाकिस्तान लेफ्ट रिव्यू और मैं सोच रहा था कि बाएँ बाजू पर अक्सर ये तनकीद की जाती है कि बंग्लादेश के मसले पर या ईस्ट पाकिस्तान के मसले पर बाएं बाजू ने कोई वाजे स्टैंड नहीं लिया बट स्टीफन आई सो वैज आई वॉज रीडिंग थ्रू दिस बुक दैर एक्चुअली दे वॉज अ लॉट ऑफ पैशनेट राइटिंग अबाउट ईस्ट पाकिस्तान एंड द क्राइसिस देर एंड द इकोनॉमिक डेप्रिवेशन एंड यू नो वॉट वॉज हैपनिंग इन पोलिटिकल रेलम सो इज दैट द इम्प्रेशन दैट यू ऑल्सो फेल्ट Absolutely. Yes. Mm-hmm. I mean it's it, it was a reminder to me because I arrived in Pakistan in 1982 for the first time mm-hmm. and Bangladesh mm-hmm. was almost hardly talked about. Mm-hmm. Right? I had heard my mother had told me mm-hmm. that there was a civil war that there used mm-hmm. to be this divided country but I really never heard anyone talk about it. So reading this it was like a snapshot into a Pakistan that could have been a very mm-hmm. different Pakistan that if I mean I think your point about the the 1958 and that just fundamental crushing of people is actually you know it's it echoes the problems between an east and west pakistan when you don't trust the people mm-hmm. when you don't trust democracy mm-hmm. then you will collapse mm-hmm. i mean hannah arendt's point about violence exercised is an indication of weakness mm-hmm. i mean this is a problem right when the mm-hmm. pakistan state is so afraid of its people mm-hmm. it's a weak state it's mm. a very weak state mm. it, the tanks look strong but what it's revealing is it doesn't have control mm. it's not able to effectively mobilize people to move somewhere right and reading these passages and particularly since some of the articles were of course in bangladeshi right yes. bengali this yes, this I was quite surprised to see that yes. yeah and so we have the urdu we have the bengali yes. and and when i first came there were still pakistani rupees that had the bengali writing on it right so i could see that and of course one of the things uh, in all the rickshaw drivers they had pictures of ayub khan mm. and i said ye kon hai and they said oh ye hamara behtreen leader tha mm. and and so my introduction to pakistan was you won the 65 war mm. and ayub khan was the greatest thing that ever happened i see so reading this <laughs> Mm. I think was for me an education as well because this history was masked from me. Right. I didn't know this history very well. I didn't right. realize just the extent to which and East and West Pakistan was a thing. Mm. You know that people mm. moved back and forth and there mm. were, you know, there were flaws with it, but mm. that it was an actual coherent community mm. of diversity. Mm. And and that was quite powerful to me and and I think we can't recreate that. We can't mm. go back there and it's very difficult to maintain a country across such a great distance with with a, a a nation in the middle that is not your best friend right i mean that's a problem it was mm. always a problem mm. but it was fascinating to me to realize that in london mm. that disappeared mm. and of course today in london you look at graduate students studying in london and the punjabis across pakistan punjab indian punjab who do they hang out with mm. each other each other mm. because they recognize that there is actually this mm. 
this thing that binds us, the things mm. that, you know, the sort of common cause that we can find if we can get the, the kind of political rhetorical propaganda out of the way, mm -hmm. then actually we can connect. And we see that in this, in this nice. magazine, nice. that they did get that political mm. rhetoric out of mm. the way, and they could sit in a room and mm. say, we have some problems, but the people who are in East Pakistan, the people in West Pakistan, should have some unity. They should have some way to argue mm. and not fall apart. Mm. Of course, they did fall apart, so. Yeah, yeah. Salima Khala, aapne 60s ki baat ki, aur jo aapne mazmoon likha, فن پر وہ میرے لئے تو کم سے کم ساری باتیں نہیں تھیں کیونکہ میں اس چیز کو زیادہ جانتا نہیں ہے اس میں جو سکلچر کا آپ نے ذکر کیا آپ نے پینٹنگ کا ذکر کیا چند ناموں کے علاوہ بہت سارے نام آپ نے اور لیے جو میرے لئے تو کم سے کم نئے تھے اور فیض صاحب کی اپنی شاعری پاکستان لیفٹ ریویو کے اندر شاعر ہوتی رہی اور بھی شاعری ہوتی رہی دو تینگز that I want to ask you is first with respect to this particular work of art which I believe is yours uh, what does it signify because I think I see a red flag in the middle <laughs> and uh, second I want to ask a, you know اس زمانے کے اندر تجزیہ بھی بڑا ہوا اور بڑا مطلب فیروز احمد خان کا فیروز احمد صاحب کا اور لوگوں کا بڑا سفیسٹیکیٹڈ تجزیہ بھی ہے اس کے اندر ڈیٹا کے ساتھ اور سو آن تو مگر سمہاو سکسٹی سے سیونٹی سے جو چیز سروائیو کی وہ یہ تجزیہ نہیں تھا وہ تو ہم جانتے بھی نہیں کہ کیا تھا بلکہ مگر جو آرٹ تھی وہ سروائیو کی وہ آج بھی لوگ جو ہے سنتے ہیں اس کو انجوئے کرتے ہیں تو ان دو چیزوں پر روشنی ڈالی ایک تو اپنے آرٹ ورک پر اور دوسرا یہ کہ آرٹ جو ہے why did that continue and the other side just kind of seem to have disappeared I think that's a very good question um, because I think that آرٹ سوائیوڈ کیونکہ اس کے اوپر کوئی توجہ سرکاری توجہ نہیں تھی تو وہ نظر بچا کے اور کام ہوتا رہا I think that جو سب سے زیادہ آرٹ کو خطرہ تھا وہ زیادہ الحق کے زمانے میں تھا وہ اس لیے کیونکہ ایوب خاص پیریڈ the dictator and his very good bureaucracy which was very efficient excellent they realized کہ The dictator has to have a soft image. Right. We know right. that story. Yes. Baad mein bhi repeat hui. Right. To uske liye you have to patronize the arts. Mm. You have to patronize poets. Either writers guild shuru hua. Mm. Um, artiston ke um, bade bade projects bane. Mm. Um, Saad Kain sahab ko bohat bade murals mile. State bank mein, Mangla dam mein, vagara, vagara, vagara. We know that dictators use culture to make uh, themselves appear more human mm. and more people friendly. Mm. Um, they had dispensed with that mm. and that was the time. But by that time I think you had got a group of artists and people who realized what was happening in Zia's time. Mm -hmm. Lehaza and especially the women because mm -hmm. they saw what was going on. Mm -hmm. So they decided that we don't want to do that which is what we are saying. We will do it. They are saying that you don't do human form. You don't do it on the body. You don't do it on the body. You don't do it on the body. تو کسی بھی خاتون مصور نے خطاتی نہیں کی کہ ہم نے نہیں کرنا آپ نے کہہ دیا ہم نے کہہ دیا ہم نے تو کرنا ہی نہیں میری جو گیلری تھی میں نے کہا جی نہ ہم لینڈسکیپ دکھائیں گے نہ خطاتی کریں گے these two things we will not do we will show every other kind of work so there was a kind of rebellion which was there during that period I think that those years from the 60s to today the one thing that has flourished in Pakistan is contemporary art اور اس کی بہت سی وجوہات ہیں ان میں یہ بھی ہیں کہ بھئی آپ کے پاس کچھ چھوٹ چھوٹے جزیرے تھے این سی اے ایک جزیرہ تھا جس میں آپ نے بہت محنت سے اور ایک دوسرے کو ایک دوستی کے ساتھ ایک دوسرے کے قریب لائے nobody sold out to the army pressure I'll be very frank about it because there was a lot of that that's amazing Mm. And uh, we protected one another. Mm. Uh, we were targeted, mm. but we always protected one another. So we survived. Mm. And um, we survived, and a certain kind of academic freedom remained in that institution, just gives the art. I see. I see. So we 
the one thing that has flourished today जब हम बड़े दुखी होते हैं और कहते हैं जी पाकिस्तान में कोई चीज जो है वो फल फूल नहीं रही तो मैं कहती हूँ नहीं एक चीज फल फूल रही है वो नौजवान फनकार है अब जाइए लाहौर म्यूजियम में देखिए कल शाम को एक नुमाइश का अफ्त हुआ था बिल्कुल यंग आर्टिस्ट उन ऑफ थिंक फेस्ट ने भी उसको सपोर्ट किया है यंग आर्टिस्ट हु हैव रिस्पॉन्डेड टू वॉट इज देयर इन द म्यूजियम पुरानी चीज़ किसी को लेके उससे इंस्परेशन हासिल करके कोई नया काम किया ये कोई आठ दस आर्टिस्ट ने किया ऑल यंग पीपल एंड आई वेंट देयर एंड आई वॉज Very depressed when I go. I got to Lahore Museum. I'll be honest. I had been to somewhere. You know. So, जब मैंने जाके वो काम देखा और मैंने कहा भाई इस मुल्क में इस किस्म का मोज़ा हो सकता है. Yes. You know, young people can respond to something that is old mm. and produce new work, mm. which is vibrant, which is dynamic, which mm. is revolutionary in the way that mm. they're doing it. It's incredible. और वो पाकिस्तान के हर कोने कोने से ऐसे आर्टिस्ट बिल्कुल छोटे छोटे विलेजेस से एक लड़की मुल्तान की थी एक लड़का जो है वो पता नहीं कहाँ का है एंड वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग थिंग आई जस्ट डिस्क्राइब जस्ट वन गंधारा गैलरी में वन ऑफ द बॉयज हैज डन बीकन हाउस का ही पढ़ा हुआ है उसने गंधारा का एक संग मरमर का लोटस का फॉर्म है इतना बड़ा उसने वो लिया और एक वो पिलर पे रखा हुआ है ऊपर से रोशनी पड़ रही है उस फॉर्म के बीच में उसने एक बोल डाला है गोल्ड फिश बोल डाला है जिसमें दो लाइव गोल्ड फिश जो है वो तैर रही हैं पानी में यू हैव गंधारा पीस विच इज एट नाइन हंड्रेड ईयर्स ओल्ड एंड संगे मरमर में और उसके ऊपर दस गोल्ड फिश बोल उसके बीच में दो सुनहरी मछलियाँ जो हैं वो तैर रही हैं Beautiful. It's an incredible idea. Mm. It is so beautiful where the past and the present are together, and this is the mind of a young artist. Mm. So I am proud of the fact that nay, our young people, given an opportunity, who is in the gig, who is ramak hai. Yes. Shairi me bhi nazar aati hai, musiki me bhi nazar aati hai. To hume fun ka kafi shock hai. We have fun with fun. <laughs> <laughs> स्टीफन uh, uh, मेरा आप सवाल आपसे ये है कि इन द इन द इन द एस एज दैट वी सी द पॉलिटिकल एस एज दैट वी सी देर आर टू रिलेशनशिप्स दैट सीम टू बी वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग वन इज द रिलेशनशिप ऑफ द लेफ्ट टू द पाकिस्तान पीपल्स पार्टी वहाँ पे भी आप तारिक अली साहब का एक आर्टिकल है इंटरव्यू uh, है भुट्टो साहब के साथ और आर्टिकल भी है जिसमें वो भुट्टो साहब पर तनकीद भी कर रहे हैं कुछ हद तक सपोर्ट भी कर रहे हैं मगर ज़्यादातर तनकीद ही कर रहे हैं और इसी तरह नेशनल अवामी पार्टी के दोनों धड़ों के हवाले से नैब वली एंड नैब हाशानी के हवाले से देर सेवरल थिंग्स that have been written and you know how the left is sort of thinking its way through that uh, i wonder if you uh, ye bhi badi dilchasp baat isliye hai kyunki hum pe baaye baazu pe aksar ye ilzam lagta hai kuch log ye kehte hain ki ji aap to mainstream se kate hue the kuch log kehte hain ji aap to mainstream hi karte rahe kuch aur karte hi nahi rahe what is your feeling about these twin relationships of the ppp and the national awami party as seen through the uh, the pages of the pakistan left review well i think what we see in these pages is is exactly what you what you're describing that people are thinking through things and the left the world over eats itself better than anyone else <laughs> right so the interview with Tariq Ali and and Zulfikar Ali Bhutto I mean of course what well, the, the 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 articles that he wrote I mean you can see that they probably have a lot in common but the details are profound mm -hmm. they disagree on some profound details and of course we see that in in Bhutto's cabinet some of those people who stood by him at the beginning then were like brutally Mm. put it out mm. because the finer details matter mm. and this is something that when you care deeply and profoundly then those arguments are quite serious and if you're you know, I'm not going to criticize any politician but mm -hmm. I I know this in writ large in the academic and I know that you know this when you are running something you start to think oh, I don't care about the details I just need to get this job done mm. and so the purists who have been your allies mm. become your bitterest enemies mm. and it's not that you actually have started disagreeing with each other just mm. i have started to prioritize not the detail but i need so i i need 100 students in my university mm. on september 1st mm. so somebody tells me we have to have you know so many of this province and this social economic class mm. and i think yeah yeah i want that but i need 100 mm. students mm -hmm. and so there we fall out over mm. that and it's i think what we see here is 
that the left is actually pretty honest with mm. itself. Mm -hmm. It criticizes itself and it doesn't say the greater good is more important than the details mm -hmm. of, of the policy or the details of the principles. Mm. Um, so I think the articles, we see this is not just unique to Pakistan. The left everywhere is doing this. Look at the Labour Party in the United Kingdom. Mm -hmm. Cannot decide where it's going to be. And, and we all know they need to win the election, right? Mm. We know that we've got a party that has to be out. Mm -hmm. Is it possible for the left to just silence its internal debate long enough for a general election? And many on the left say, no, mm. it's not possible mm. because the principles are too important. Mm. And if we let yet another, you know, mealy mouth center left party in, it would be no better than a center right party. And mm. this is what I wanted the youth to see. Mm. Those debates are not new. Mm. It's not Gen Z that invented this very true. cannibalistic kind of eating oneself. Very this true. has always been, you go back to George Orwell mm. and George Orwell's characterization of the Spanish Civil War. Mm. It's exactly the same. You start out unified and then you realize, on principle, I disagree with that point, or that mm. point, or mm. that point. Mm. And it is the kind of, you know, the head of a needle, the mm. angels debating on the head of a needle. Mm. And I think these were angels. I think these mm. were people, every single one of them, actually was quite noble and virtuous mm. and wanted a better world. Mm. And because of that, mm. it matters so much that they actually can't decide which of these parties mm. to go for. Is it mm. Awami? Is it People's Party? Mm. Is it is Communist it Party? Yeah. yeah. I mean, all of them mm -hmm. probably do want something. And, and of course, on the other side, they don't actually care that much about principle. Mm -hmm. It is about monopolization of power, right. and control of resource. And I mean, you said the the history needs to be renewed. How can we don't archive it? Well, I'm not going to blame the left entirely for that. Mm -hmm. I think there's an entire machinery on mm -hmm. the other side mm -hmm. that is trying to suppress this history. That's mm -hmm. trying to not let Pakistanis know there were trade unions here. Mm -hmm. There was a communist party. There still is a communist party, mm -hmm. tiny. Mm -hmm. But all of this existed, and it didn't go away by accident. It mm -hmm. went away because there was a huge force mm -hmm. designed to make it go away. We see mm -hmm. that across the Middle East. Mm -hmm. Communist parties, trade unions, cooperatives, mm -hmm. all crushed in the Cold War mm -hmm. because they were a threat to someone who didn't care much about principle, but they mm -hmm. cared a lot about power. Salima ji, we have a lot of इस काम की मगर जो एक बारल चीज मुझे नजर आई जो एक काफी बड़ा गैप कह ले मुझे नजर आया वो ये था कि आजकल के लेफ्ट में कम से कम खावतीन के मामले को और खास तौर पे विमेन्स एक्शन फोरम के बाद खावतीन के मसाइल को बहुत अहमियत दी जाती है जबकि इन आर्टिकल्स में मुझे कोई खास जेंडर के क्वेश्चन पे खावतीन की आजादी पे कोई ज्यादा मजामीन नहीं नजर आए इस पे कुछ रोशनी डालेंगे सारे लिखने वाले मर्द हैं मैं आठ मैं आठ के ऊपर लिख रही थी बाकी सब मर्द हैं नो यो यो एब्सोल्युटली राइट इस ग्रुप में दे वर दे वांट एनी वेमेन आई वाज दी ओनली वन हु वाज वर्किंग एंड फ्रैंकली स्पीकिंग बिकॉज़ आई वाज नॉट इन अ सेंस अ पॉलिटिकल in the rest of them, like the rest of them were very much to do with either studying law or mm -hmm. politics, mm -hmm. etc., anthropology and so on. I was doing a and I pound So it's a fact that, um, that there were not, there were no women as part of this. Not surprisingly really because um, Women who were going to university at that time were a rarity mm. uh, from Pakistan. I see. Uh, even from what was then East Pakistan, I it see. was it was not very usual. I and uh, I think much later we had Zinat Zayat mm. who, who joined mm. the group, but she was not part of the Pakistan Left Review. Mm. Um, but she she's about the only person I can think of from Pakistan who was you know part of our group there yeah. so um, and I think also that we had um, earlier in Pakistan while I had been uh, you know out on the streets um, demonstrating for the family laws ordinance and so on so these were things that were to do with Pakistan locally mm. there we were looking at questions which have to do with mm. war mm. nuclear menace right you know, and those issues. Mm. I think involved in that, uh, the sensitivity to um, looking at 
women per se was very much a result of Ayub Khan, uh, of yeah. Zia right. uh, regime. Mm. Because if you look at what happened during um, the short period of People's Party government, mm. there was an amazing spurt in profile, high profile women. Mm. For the first time women became ambassadors. Mm -hmm. It was for the first time that you had women on public platform, you had women very extremely vocal um, as politicians. So that thing that was in the 70s, came up in the same way. And not particularly in that time, it was a later development. I think this is a small list of the two suffers, the three suffers of the list. It was the one that was written in the book of the book. Who's Who in CIA. Yes, it's in there. So, it was my hand in that book. So, we said that in that book, the people who were working in Pakistan, the CIA, the Americans, we should have to add a list. Okay, you didn't have to add a list. They didn't have to add a list. But the thing was that we had to add a list from the list. And we had to add a list from the list. We had to add a list from the list. हमने इस बात से हम बहुत लुत्फ अंदोज हुए कि पहला नाम जो था क्योंकि ये अल्फाबेटिकल लिस्ट है पहला नाम जो है वो एक खातून का है जिनका नाम है जेन एबल जो कि कराची में थी she was posted in Karachi and we had a lot of fun with our father because he was always coming to meet our father from Karachi so when he was in Karachi we thought that you didn't know how many secrets of the CIA and the women he said that I was going to take secrets from him so I thought that he had something to do with me but if you look at the list then the book was very special I have to say that the book was very special but the book was very special but the book was very special के लोग जो थे जिनको पोस्ट किया जाता था उन लिस्ट सबसे ज़्यादा लंबी थी। मैं कहूँ ईरान, पाकिस्तान, फिलिपींस ये मुल्क थे जहाँ पे ज़्यादा सीआईए के ऑपरेटिव्स पोस्ट हुए हुए थे। But it was very funny that the first name in that was a good pal of my father's. अच्छा जी आखरी मौजू आखरी साल सवाल आपसे करना चाहूँगा और फिर मेरे ख्याल से जो नाज़रीन बैठे हैं उनसे भी उनको भी मौका देंगे कि वो भी आपसे सवाल पूछ सकें एक जो मौजू आपने भी अपने इंट्रोडक्शन में छेड़ा वो ये था कि जिस तरह से उस जमाने का बाएं बाजू और आज के जमाने का बाएं बाजू और जनरली लोग रिलिजियस फंडामेंटलिज्म एक्सट्रीमिज्म तालिबान का ना जिक्र भी आपने किया उस जमाने में जमात इस्लामी वगैरह को देखते थे जब मैंने आर्टिकल्स पढ़े तो उसमें मैंने देखा कि नेपाली खान वगैरह का बड़ा बड़ी हार्ड पोजीशन थी यानी कि जो मुकामी मार्क्सिस्ट आप कह लें या लेफ्ट के लोग थे वो ये कहते थे दैट जमात इस्लामी इज बेसिकली अ फ्यूडल ऑर्गेनाइजेशन एज आई रेड इन वन ऑफ द आर्टिकल्स आपने अपने इदारे में इन योर इंट्रोडक्शन आपने कुछ मैं समझता हूँ निस्बतन सॉफ्ट लाइनली कि इन द सेंस दैट यू सेड वेल यू नो द द रेटोरिक इज समटाइम्स सिमिलर टू द लेफ्ट बट एक्चुअली इट्स नॉट द सेम एक्सेट्रा डू यू फील दैट and 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 I thought that uh, also that the the the, the writers uh, in the London group were themselves also taking a relatively softer line, let's say, very very marginally, but um, or, or trying at least to find a little more nuance or something, perhaps. Today, I also see that the Mukami Pakistan Kabai Bazu is a very hard line. Hai. तालेबान के मसले पे टीटीपी रिलिजियस फंडामेंटल्स यहाँ बड़ी लड़ाई हुई है उनके साथ रिलिजियस फंडामेंटल्स कोबतों के साथ और बाहर के माय बाजू के लोग जैसे तारेकली का आपने जिक्र किया वो कुछ उसको एंटी इंपीरियलिस्ट पॉइंट ऑफ़ व्यू से देखते हैं इसपे कुछ रोशनी डालिए मुश्किल सवाल है मगर no, it is very difficult because I think, you know, the world is more violent in some ways mm. than it was. Not that it wasn't violent then, but mm -hmm. there's more availability of violence. And of course, if you take away the trade unions, the cooperatives, if you take away the socialist parties, all those vehicles that people have for expressing dissent, then what's left? And you make people angry. You paint people into a corner. So, I mean, we tried very hard not to um, be unfair to Tariq Ali, for example. Mm. Um, I think sometimes, you know, it's like Cat Stevens said something off the cuff and he got accused of being a supporter of the Taliban. And of mm. course, Cat Stevens has spent years trying to explain, no, I'm not supporting the Taliban. That's mm. not what I want. Mm. But you take something out of context, or not even necessarily out of context, you just ask someone something uh, out of the blue, mm. they answer, you know, 
I have many friends who thought Osama bin Laden was a great guy, mm -hmm. not because they believed anything he did, but because he stood up to the West. Mm. So they named their children Osama, they named their children Saddam, they named their children, um, you know, Muammar Gaddafi. Mm -hmm. They picked these names not because they understand anything about what they're standing for. Mm. Simply, they had the guts to stand up to the United States. Mm. And if you give people, if you take away the rhetorical tools for articulating their ideas, all that's left is that kind of knee-jerk, I don't like you, he doesn't like you, so he must be good, he must be on my side. Mm. And of course, I don't think anyone in this book would find right. Taliban even remotely of course. acceptable. Of course. <laughs> I think that's, of course. that probably is a given. That's a given, um, yes. But they might say, you know, well, what do poor people do when you mm. take away every other vehicle for mobilization mm. other than a religious one? And the religious one has been hijacked by people who are cruel and hateful, and I will go on the record saying I really don't like the Taliban, I think they're, they're actually quite, a, quite an unpleasant bunch, um, mm. and I don't like depriving people of their rights, I don't like the attitudes about women, and I think that everyone in this book mm. would agree with that. Mm. Um, but what else do poor people do? Poor mm. people, they have a legitimate grievances against something, mm -hmm. but they don't have the education, they don't have the institutions, and actually, frankly, the Taliban tries to deprive them of art. Mm. So they don't even have that way to express something through art. Mm. I went to a, a wonderful student art exhibition in the Arts Council of Karachi, and there's a young artist there, Ramsha Khan, who's got this sort of exhibition about human trafficking. And what vehicles do we have as individuals to say, this is an uh, appalling, repugnant, monstrous thing that's going on around us? It's very difficult, mm. you know, to, to think about which party would, would, would you could tap into for that. And then you've got uh, Mullah Omar saying, I will stand up for the protections of women. I will stop the exploitation of young boys and women. Okay, Mullah Omar stood for so much more than that, but this is the narrative you hear over and over again. Mm -hmm. He made it safe for young men and women to go from one part of the, of the city to another without being raped, without being you know, extorted for bribes, without being beaten. And, and that is very attractive if you have no other options. Mm -hmm. And that's the thing is this, this is part of a much bigger piece that I think, you know, Salima Saliba and I and others would like to give young people to say they have options, they must explore those options. Taliban is not the only option for poor people. There are many, many more options. Mm -hmm. I and mean, we've heard a lot of pessimism in this conference. Mm -hmm. I'm far less pessimistic about the future of Pakistan than That's great to hear. Yes. <laughs> I think there, are, there is a bright future here, but it's a future that the young people will have to seize, mm -hmm. and they will have to think creatively about how do we do it. So this morning, when the Vice Chancellor, Professor Zaidi, said students need to start asking questions better, well, actually, we need to, to give our faculty the confidence to accept that those questions are not a threat. Those questions are Fair enough. the future. Absolutely. Right? So this is part of what we're trying to do. And I mean, I'm, I'm babbling on now, so please <laughs> shut me up. But I think it's a very, very important question. But as you said, it's very difficult to answer. It's not so much that anyone is saying anything positive about X, Y, Z. But it's more of a criticism of how society has been deprived of any other avenues of expressing their grievances. And that is the central point that I you I think that's absolutely right. Yeah. All right, great. Thank you. Uh, sir, that moment is the Pakistan constitution कोई ये सिर्फ स्कूलों कॉलेजों में लेक्चर तक ही है ये लेफ्ट का इंटरव्यूज और मौजूदा पाकिस्तान में कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन अमेंडमेंट पे गौर कर रही है स्ट्रक्चर को चेंज करने को कैसे सलीमा खाना डू वांट टू एड्रेस दैट इट्स नॉट माय फील्ड बट आई विल से दैट राइट नाउ आप तो कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन में रह के भी स्ट्रगल नहीं कर सकते सो यू नो इट बिकम्स लाइक अ क्वेश्चन बियॉन्ड अ क्वेश्चन मगर मेरे ख्याल में चूंकि हम एक वक्त की बात कर रहे हैं एक एरा की बात कर रहे हैं वहाँ पे तो इट वाज वाइड ओपन कि ये जो स्ट्रगल है ये जो जद्दोजहद है इस, इसकी शक्ल क्या होगी सर्टनली इट वुड बी अ पीपल स्ट्रगल हम उस जमाने की बात कर रहे हैं जबकि 22 खानदानों ने यू नो दे हैड टेकन होल्ड ऑफ द इकोनमी I mean that is what Ayub Khan is famous for. I know that so many people behind Ayub Khan's ki photo are there, but the fact remains, it saw it saw a consolidation of the wealth 
of the few mm. and it was a time when agar aap dekhen to the there's a wonderful novel of the time uh, called the murder of aziz khan Achha. by zulfikar ghosh mm. which example jab wo uh, uh, novel chhapa tha to wo ban hua tha yahan pe aur maine london mein padha tha it's a simple story of a, a worker who is killed by the industrialists because he tried to unionize the people so jab hum aaj ye baat karte hain तो लोगों को ये मुश्किल होता है इस इवन विजुअलाइज करना कि इस मुल्क में ट्रेड यूनियन मूवमेंट किस कदर स्ट्रॉन्ग थी यूनियंस कितने अहम थे उन्होंने लोगों के लिए कितने हकूक जो थे मजदूरों के हकूक वो हासिल किए आज नहीं पता कि फिशरमैंस कोऑपरेटिव कराची के हाबर में किस कदर स्ट्रॉन्ग मूवमेंट थी कि मच्छेरों को सबको इकट्ठा किया उनका एक कोऑपरेटिव बनाया ये उस जमाने की बात है व्हेन देर वाज एक्चुअली पीपल्स कलेक्टिव लेबर एंड मूवमेंट आज ये इवन सोचना बड़ा मुश्किल है आप छह बंदों की आप यूनियन बनाना शुरू करें तो इमीडिएटली यूर यू नो बरतरफ हो जाते हैं बरतरफ हो जाते हैं जी ये पीछे साहब हैं काफी सारे सवाल हैं वंडरफुल छोटे छोटे सवाल पूछे ताकि ज्यादा से ज्यादा सवाल पूछ सके हम <laughs> और जवाब भी छोटे छोटे सर जब तक जहाँ तक मेरा नॉलेज है सोशलिज्म जो अवाम की हुकूमत है और पाकिस्तान में स्टेब्लिशमेंट के होते हुए और रूलिंग क्लास के होते हुए और क्या रूलिंग क्लास और स्टेब्लिशमेंट और सोशलिज्म को ऊपर आने देगी प्रिवेल करने देगी या नहीं तो आपने अपने सवाल में अपना जवाब दे दिया <laughs> एक और सवाल लेते हैं जी वहाँ पे नहीं देंगे ऑब्वियसली वो खिलाफ ही होते हैं और क्या बात जी इधर अच्छा सवाल था थैंक यू मोहम्मद अनस इकट्ठे करके बात करेंगे इसमें मोहम्मद अनस फ्रॉम पॉलिटिकल साइंस डिपार्टमेंट सर मेरा क्वेश्चन ये है कि जब भी लेफ्ट विंग का सवाल आता है तो मेरे ख्याल में यही आता है कि इट इम्पोज इक्वेलीटेरियनिज्म इन अ सोसाइटी और कोलेक्टिविज्म और कम्यूनिटेरियनिज्म मगर आप एक ह्यूमन नेचर के अंदर सेल्फिशनेस को कैसे खत्म कर सकते हैं अच्छा और जैसे जॉर्ज अरोल लिखता है कि ऑल एनिमल्स आर इक्वल बट सम आर मोर इक्वल क्या ये नहीं हो सकता कि ये एक्सप्लॉयट कर रहे हैं ऑन द नेम ऑफ इक्वेलिटेरियनिज्म ठीक ओके कैन वी टेक अ ग्रुप ऑफ क्वेश्चंस एंड देन यू कैन एड्रेस देम कलेक्टिवली बिकॉज़ देयर सो मेनी पीपल हु वांट टू आई थिंक कमेंट एंड एंड आस्क क्वेश्चंस हेलो एवरीबॉडी माय नेम इज इजहार हुसैन और मेरा सवाल ये है कि फारावाइल अगर हम कंसीडर करें कि लेफ्ट की सियासत पाकिस्तान में आती है तो जो सवाल पेरीफ्री का जो सवाल आइडेंटिटी बेस रैशल प्रोफाइलिंग का है या जो सवाल आइडेंटिटी की बेस पे ह्यूमन राइट्स की वायलेशन होती है वो लेफ्ट में नहीं होगी मजलूम कौमों का के हवाले से आप पूछ रहे हैं वेरी गुड क्वेश्चन वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट क्वेश्चन पीछे ले गए कहीं पे अच्छा इधर लेके जा रहे हैं मैं चाहता हूँ ज्यादा से ज्यादा आप भी बात करें आप भी गुफ्तु करें आपसे भी हम सुने असलम उमैर माई सेल्फ उमैर फुरकान मेरा तमूसम बेसिकली आपसे क्वेश्चन है कि जिस तरह लेफ्ट का जो मेन राइवल अगर हमारी सोसाइटी में वो कंसीडर होते हैं वो इस्लामिक पॉलिटिकल पार्टीज़ हैं क्यों तो वो राइट और लेफ्ट उसको जो है राइट को कलर्जी में तो मेरा उसमें यह कि इस्लामिक जो मेन आइडियोलॉजी है वो भी यही है कि जो वर्किंग क्लास है जो लोअर क्लास है उसको अपलिफ्ट करना अगर उस लिहाज से हम अपनी इस्लामिक और हमारा जो पाकिस्तान में मेजर तबका है वो इस्लाम के लिए बड़ा सॉफ्ट जो रखता है और जब उसमें लेफ्ट की अगर प्रीच किया जाता है उनको एजुकेट किया जाता तो वो ये समझते हैं कि ये शायद एथिस्ट माइंडसेट है या ये जिस तरह वो रशियन जी दहरियों का ये वाला कॉन्सेप्ट है तो उसमें ये कि आपको उन कम्युनिटीज़ के लिए भी एक जो एग्जांपल जैसे मौलाना अब्दुल हमीद भाषानी है बंग्लादेश में उनको रेड मौलाना कहा जाता है तो इस तरह की एग्जाम्पल्स को ग्लोरीफाई किया जाए राधर दैन लोकल लोगों को एजुकेट करने के लिए राधर दैन मार्क्सिस्ट और लैन जो है और वो उनको Uh, समझ में भी नहीं आता उनके और इसके लिए जिस तरह की यहाँ पे तो हमें लेफ्ट को एजुकेट uh, करने के लिए यहाँ पे गैदरिंग्स हम बनाते हैं hmm. लेकिन जिस तरह 1977 में निज़ाम मुस्तफ़ा के लिए सी आई ने अपलिफ्ट किया और मस्जिदों से तबलीग होती थी तो वो उनके लिए एक जुम्मे का खुतबा और वो ऑलरेडी ऑलरेडी इस तरह की गैदरिंग्स होती हैं और वो आइडिया ज़्यादा तेज़ी से प्रोपेगेट करता है राधर दैन इस तरह की गैदरिंग से हम लेफ्ट के ओवरव्यूज को जो है वो प्रोपेगेट करें चलें दैट्स गुड एडवाइस फॉर आस थैंक यू हाँ जी इधर भी आप इधर से पूछ लें बड़ी कोशिश की है यकीन जाने 
क्योंकि और कुछ नहीं तो हम सेहत के ऊपर और एजुकेशन के ऊपर बहुत कुछ कर सकते हैं और जब एक दफ़ा ये एक पॉइंट ये वाला प्रोपागेट हो गया देन देर वुड बी मैनी थिंग्स टू डू इसका मतलब आप ये कह रहे हैं कि मैं दाढ़ी भी उगा लूँ और इस्टेब्लिशमेंट का फेवरेट भी हो जाऊँ अच्छा चले ये भी ठीक है सोचेंगे इस पर सोचेंगे थैंक यू अस्सलाम अलैक्म uh my particular question is ma'am i thought uh, you highlighted the point history of the thinking and concern about uh, in your time but what i feel like it's a time of technology and the youth is more concerned about critical thinking and world is also moving towards a knowledge economy can you please relate your time with this time so it will be help for us for youngsters for future ye to bada aapne zakheem qisam ka sawal pucha hai isme kafi waqt darkar hai usko jawab dene tasalli bas jawab dene ke liye idhar se puchne khade ho ke वो खातून को पीछे दे सर मेरा क्वेश्चन ये है कि जैसे हम फार uh, राइट right को देखते हैं लाइक मेन स्ट्रीम पोलिटिकल पार्टीज हैं तो उनकी हमें प्रपोगेशन uh, नजर आती है टू द ग्राउंड उनके लाइक काउंसलर्स भी नजर आते हैं हमें उनके हमें ऊपर uh, नाजिम भी नजर आते हैं और एम एन एम पी एस भी हमें लेफ्ट की साइड पे हमें उनकी ऑन ग्राउंड जो है वो uh, कोई पोलिटिकल स्ट्रगल नजर नहीं आती नहीं। हमें इलेक्शन में उनके कैंडिडेट्स नजर नहीं आते लेफ्ट के तो आप ऑन द ग्राउंड क्या काम कर रहे हैं एक्सेप्ट ऑन द सोशल मीडिया एंड द यूट्यूब वेरी नाइस क्वेश्चन वो अच्छा मैं तो मेरी माँ बैठी हैं मेरी भी आंखें अब कमजोर हो गई अच्छा इस सारी डिबेट में मुझे एक बात का ख्याल आ रहा था कि हम प्रोलीटेरियट की बात करते हैं इंडस्ट्रियलाइजेशन की बात करते हैं वो सब कुछ तो खत्म हो गया अब तो कुछ भी नहीं कोई इंडस्ट्री है ही नहीं हमारे पास लंपन प्रोलीटेरियट बहुत वास्ट है उसके बारे में आप लोगों का क्या ख्याल है बड़े मुश्किल मुश्किल सवाल पूछ लिए सबने <laughs> मेरा क्वेश्चन लीडरशिप के हवाले से है अभी दूसरे पार्टीज को जब हम देखते हैं तो फिर लीडरशिप है उनके अंदर राइट में है सेंटर में है या लेफ्ट में लेफ्ट में अब लेफ्ट की पॉलिटिक्स को जब हम देखते हैं जारी बात अगर हम तब्दीली की बात करते हैं थ्रू पार्लियामेंट्री पॉलिटिक्स के थ्रू आएगी अब हमारी पार्लियामेंट में लेफ्ट की कोई नुमाइंदगी आलमोस्ट नेग्लिजिबल है माई क्वेश्चन इज वाई लेफ्ट हैज फेल टू प्रोड्यूस ए लीडर ऐसा okay. क्यों हो रहा है अभी तक ओके थैंक यू आखिरी सवाल इधर कर लेते हैं फिर पैनलिस्ट की तरह दोबारा आते हैं ए, ए, इनको दे दें सर मेरा सवाल ये कि जो उन्नीस सौ उनहत्तर की दिहाई में जो एक स्टूडेंट यूनियन थी उसमें लेफ्ट की जो रिव्यू थी वो बहुत ज़्यादा पाई जाती थी फिर उन्नीस सौ के बाद जो बट्टू का दौर शुरू हुआ उसमें जो सोशलिज्म का जो पॉइंट्स थे यानी सोशलिज्म की जो रिवोल्यूशन मतलब एक रिवोल्यूशनरी पॉइंट थी वो बट्टू ले गया ऐसे जो उधर उधर जो लीडरशिप थी वो क्यों ना काम हो गए और इसके बाद जो स्टलनिज्म और ट्रस्काइट की जो जो सिग्रीगेशन हुई यानी मतलब इधर ट्रस्टर कुछ चलनिस्ट है कुछ ट्रस्काइट है हम क्यों मतलब अगर लेफ्ट लेफ्ट की तंजीम बननी है वो मार्क्सिस्ट लेनिस्ट क्यों नहीं बनती बहुत शुक्रिया बहुत अच्छे अच्छे सवाल आपने किए हैं और ये इन सब सवालों का जवाब इतने मुख्तर वक्त में तो नहीं दिया जा सकता मगर मैं समझता हूँ कि एक बात कहूँगा और फिर अपने पैनलिस्ट से इस पर जवाब लेंगे वो ये है कि जो इस किताब से चीज़ साबित होती है वो ये है कि ये बाएँ बाजू ख़ुद ब खुद एमी बस मर नहीं गया या इसने वफात नहीं पा ली बल्कि जिस तरह स्टीफन ने कहा कि इसको बड़ी बाकायदगी से कुचला गया दबाया गया उसी इस्टेबलिशमेंट ने जिसके आप जिक्र कर रहे थे कि हम दोस्ती कर लें और उनके साथ वो लोग मिले हुए थे जिनका आप जिक्र कर रहे हैं कि मैं उनके साथ जुड़ जाऊँ तो ये बड़ी बाकायदगी से एक प्लानिंग के तहत जो है ना इसको दबाया गया इसको ख़त्म किया गया तो इस किताब की जो असल आफादियत है और जो असल इसका मकसद है वो यही है कि आपको एक विंडो मिले उस दुनिया में जो कि इसके दबाने से पहले एग्जिस्ट करती थी जो कि एक बहुत मुख्तलफ दुनिया थी एक बहुत मुख्तलिफ पाकिस्तान था जो हमारी जनरेशन बशमूल मेरे शायद हम तस्वर भी नहीं कर सकते कि बाएँ बाजू क्या था कैसे था और क्या उसकी ख्वाहिशात थी क्या उसके अजायम थे क्या उसकी सोच थी इसके साथ ही मैं सलीमा जी आपको भी दावत देता हूँ उसकी शायद मैं आपने बात बिल्कुल सही कर दी क्योंकि अक्सर लोग जब इस किस्म का सवाल पूछते हैं आपस अलावा इसके जो कि स्टीव ने कहा कि द लेफ्ट ईट्स इट्स सेल्फ दैट इज़ ट्रू बट आई हैव सीन आई हैव विटनेस्ड एंड आई हैव वॉच्ड हाउ विद ग्रेट ब्रूटैलिटी 
बहुत ही जैसे आपने कहा कि कुचला गया है उन लोगों को लेफ्ट और राइट को तो आप छोड़ दें जो लोग जो दिल और दिमाग रखते थे लोगों की जिंदगियों को तब्दील करने के लिए किस तरह से उनको कुचला गया जब हसन नासिर को लाहौर फोर्ट में टॉर्चर करके और मार दिया गया तो उसका क्या कसूर था वो यही था ना कि वो मज़दूरों का लीडर था इसके अलावा उसका कोई कसूर नहीं था इस तरह से हज़ारों सैकड़ों लोग जो हैं वो इसी तरह से कत्ल हुए मारे गए उन्होंने अपनी अपनी जाने दे दी उन्होंने लंबा अरसा जो है वो जेलों में काटा है इस इस हद तक के उनकी उनका स्पिरिट उनकी जान ख़त्म हो गई तो अगर वो लोग आपको आज नज़र नहीं आते वो इसलिए क्योंकि एक मुहिम के तहत एक कर, ऐसी मुहिम की कड़ियाँ हैं जो अठावन से चलती चली आई हैं और आज तक वो कड़ियाँ मौजूद हैं आप पूछें उन लोगों से जो आज भी जेलों में हैं आप पूछें उन लोगों से जो जिनके प्यारे गायब हो गए हैं ये वो लोग हैं जो कि दिलों में वो, वो आरजू रखते थे कि हम लोगों के हमारे लोगों की ज़िंदियाँ बेहतर हों और एक ज़्यादा आसूदा मुस्तबिल हो तो वो लोग हैं और वो आपकी नज़रों से उजल हैं वो आपके माजी में भी थे आज भी मौजूद हैं मुस्तबिल में भी होंगे लेकिन मुकाबला सख्त है स्टीफन Uh, in Pakistan learn from the past and what can it do today well i actually would like the right to learn something from this book interesting um, because you asked how come we don't have left leaders how come the leader the left hasn't led and i think well at the local level we have many leftist leaders who are very effective and very good and at the local level you can have a kind of consensus around one end of an ideological spectrum at the national level there's 220 million people mm-hmm. they're not all on the left mm-hmm. so you wouldn't want i wouldn't want a vizidiazm who was hard left or hard right what mm-hmm. i want is a vizidiazm vizidiazm who thinks about all pakistanis and mm-hmm. understands that at that level compromise mm-hmm. and negotiation mm-hmm. that's where we are so you're never going to get a you know the purest left dream leader you hopefully never get the purest right dream although i think we may have come close to that with <laughs> um but i think this is you know at the national level you're dealing with consensus who will never satisfy everyone it's not consensus mm-hmm. it's compromise mm-hmm. where everyone will be a little bit dissatisfied mm-hmm. but we have to have that protection for the most vulnerable mm-hmm. so it's the right that mm-hmm. needs to read this book mm-hmm. and understand that people matter people's mm-hmm. voices matter mm-hmm. and they need to start compromising because i think actually the leftist leaders we've had the reason we're dissatisfied with them is because they got into power and they realized there's a bunch of very conservative people in my country and I have to represent them too mm. and that's why i still even though i i'm not a marxist mm. i lean left because mm. the left has always had more humanity and mm. the left has always m- reflected better mm. that yes those people like the dariwala mm. who i disagree with on many things mm. they still deserve mm. to live a decent life of they course. still to have the have to have their protections mm. they can't be excluded just Absolutely. because we disagree with them yeah. and then of course suddenly I'm my my radical leftist daughter will attack me and say daddy you're selling out. I think well I'm not selling out. I'm trying to make space for everyone mm-hmm. and that's as true in Pakistan as it is everywhere else where we become polarized and want to exclude mm-hmm. the people that lost and mm-hmm. I think that's profoundly unfair. Mm-hmm. So everyone should read the book but particularly the right needs to read the book and realize there's some good ideas on the left that they should embrace. Thank you Stephen. Thank you Salima Hashmi. Big round of applause. फॉर आर गेस्ट और जाते जाते मैं ये फिक्र आपके लिए अर्ज़ करूँगा कि फैज़ साहब से किसी ने पूछा कहा कि फैज़ साहब आप शायरी बड़ी खूबसूरत लिखते हैं मगर जो आपका अंदाज बयाँ है उसमें कुछ ज़रा बेहतरी आ सकती है तो गालिबा फैज़ साहब ने जवाब दिया कि जनाब अब सब कुछ हम भी करें कुछ आप भी करें तो मेरा भी आपको यही जवाब होगा कि अब सब कुछ हम नहीं करना है कुछ आपकी बारी है आप भी कदम बढ़ाएं और वो ख्वाब जो कि आवाम का है कि एक ऐसा पाकिस्तान बने जिसमें सबके हकूक जमहूरी हकूक हों सब की बात सुनी जाए जिस तरह स्टीफन ने बड़ी खूबसूरत बात की और मज़दूरों और किसानों और मेहनत कशों और ख़वान और तमाम कौमियतों के हकूक को के जमहूरी हकूक का तहफ़ किया जाए और उनको कबूल किया जाए और आवाम का इख्तियार हो वो सब वो नया पाकिस्तान बनाना वो इमरान खान वाला नहीं वो हकीकी हकीकी तो चलो सॉरी गलत तरफ चला गया एम के एम याद आ जाएगी या हकीकी जमहूरीत मुशरफ की याद आ जाएगी मगर वो ख्वाब 
جو فیض صاحب نے دیکھا اس کو تکمیل تک پہنچانا صرف ان تین لوگوں کی ذمہ داری نہیں آپ کی بھی ذمہ داری ہے بہت شکریہ تینکیو سو مچ سر تینکیو میم ویل ہیو ففٹین منٹس بریک اینڈ ویل بی اسٹارٹنگ نیکسٹ سیشن ایٹ تھری ففٹین وچ از ٹائٹل ایز نیو میڈیا ڈیموکریٹائزیشن ورسز ڈس انفارمیشن تھینک یو